Hello friends. Welcome to our time of worship. I'm on our back deck here at the Parsonage next to some of my favorite wind chimes. When the wind blows, we're reminded that the spirit, the Ruach of God, the breath of God, the wind of God is doing something in our midst. We don't always hear the bells, but we know that the spirit is always working. But especially when the wind blows. We give special greetings to Terry and David who are worshiping with us from Williamsburg, Virginia. The Peace of Christ today comes from the Covenant Choir. Pastor Sharon will lead us in reading responsively Psalm 29 as our call to worship and then we'll sing Holy, Holy, Holy. Let us worship the living God. Peace, peace be with you. you. This week's Psalter reading is Psalm 29. Please join me in reading and praying responsively the Psalm of Praise and listen for God's word to you. Ascribe to the Lord O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry glory the Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace.
kids, if you have building block toys or Jenga blocks, now would be a good time to get them so that you can spend some time with Pastor Alyssa, who has a great lesson that uses wooden blocks. Hi kids, it's Alyssa. Why don't you come closer to the screen and we're gonna spend a few minutes talking together today. I have with me some blocks and I thought it would be really cool if we build a tower. Would you, would you like to try? Maybe you have some blocks close by at home that you wanna grab? So I'm gonna build my tower this way because I can get it really tall. Um, the problem with getting it really tall is that it falls over with just the slightest bump. And so I wonder if I try to build it this way, if it works a little better. It's not quite as tall, but it still falls over really easily. And so I wonder if I build it like this, Well, that seems to work. It's, it's pretty sturdy and it doesn't move. And so this reminds me of the Bible uh, passage that we're going to talk about today. It's a story about a man named Nicodemus who wanted to live his life differently and asked Jesus to help him, to show him the way about how to live a life like Jesus. And I think what Jesus was getting at is similar to our towers. So when we tried to build our tower really tall, maybe so that we could reach the top shelf on our own, we could do it, but it didn't always work. We can't always do everything on our own. And so when we tried to build it this way, we did a little better. We had some support. Um, we had a stronger base, but we still couldn't quite accomplish all of the things that God wants for us. And so when we build it this way, while it's not as tall, it has that strong base, and I think the strong base of our tower is like God. It's God's presence in our hearts and in our lives. It's the ways in which God is changing us and helping us to grow, to be the followers of Christ that Jesus wanted us to be. Let's pray. Hey, God. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for loving all people. Help us to build strong bases so we can lean on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Bye, kids. See you soon. Friends, let us listen with the ears of our hearts as Sienna reads the scriptures to us from the Gospel of John. A reading from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. 
Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of, enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify of what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe, and how do you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted the snake into the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of God. I'm preaching in the backyard of the parsonage, in the midst of God's creation. I'm reminded that Jesus preached most of his sermons and did most of his teaching outside, outdoors. Not in a synagogue, not in a temple, but in the midst of God's creation, which Jesus often pointed to as a metaphor for something deeper, something that pointed to the mystery of God, something that helped people to be transformed. He used the wind, which you may see blowing slightly in the background as the leaves and the trees and the branches move just a little bit. A reminder from Jesus that the Spirit is always blowing in our midst, sometimes quietly and subtly and sometimes a little bit more obviously. Today's scripture is a wonderful story and a conversation between Nicodemus, who is a biblical scholar at the time, and Jesus. Nicodemus had lots of information, but what he needed was transformation. That may be true of, of us in this present day. This may be true for the church and the denomination and Christianity in the Western world. We've got lots of information. But are we open to transformation? Nicodemus and Jesus were having a conversation about transformation. I don't know if Nicodemus knew it at that moment or not, but Jesus kept pointing to something deeper, even challenging Nicodemus, saying, you're a biblical scholar, you're a teacher of Israel. Do you not know that there is more than just information? Do you not know that there are, in every season of our lives, opportunities to grow, opportunities to deepen, opportunities to put ourselves more fully in the flow of God's love. He said to Nicodemus, if you are to grow, if you are to be transformed, even as an adult believer, you need to be born from above. The Greek is also translated, you must be born again. I remember one of my classmates in seminary was um, much more conservative in his faith than I, and he was always pressing his classmates, when were you born again? Give me the time and the date. Now for some, there is a time and a moment when God does something in their lives. But for others, it's a gradual time that God uses even over a lifetime to grow someone, to transform someone. I have learned that the Greek is really translated, have you been born from above? That means being born again and again and again. Always open to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to be born from above is like watching the wind. We don't know where it comes from or where it's going. All we see are its impact and effects. We may see the, the leaves blowing or the branches or the trees, but we don't see the wind itself. We see the impact, the effect of the wind, 
of the Spirit. And Jesus said, so it is with the Spirit. We don't know where she's blowing, where she's from, where she's going, or how we are impacted by it, but we're invited to trust that the Holy Spirit is always blowing in our midst, always doing something good within us and around us and in the world, even when we don't notice it. And then Jesus said to Nicodemus and to us, do you remember the, the Hebrew scriptures where the people of Israel were in the desert and they were being bitten by snakes. They were not only being hurt, some were losing their lives to these snake bites. And God said to Moses, make a serpent out of bronze and put it up on a pole and have the people look at it. What God was doing was inviting the people of Israel to look at what caused them the greatest fear. To look at it. And by looking at what caused them the greatest fear, and by naming it, their fears had less power. The snakes had less influence on their fears and their psyches by looking at what caused them to be afraid. That's good psychology. That's good spirituality. Sometimes, friends, we need to look at that which causes us anxiety to look at that which causes us to be fearful and to name it. And by doing so, it has less power over us. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so too must the Son of Man be lifted up. Joseph Campbell and Bill Moyers had some wonderful conversations back in the 1980s. Some of you may remember the PBS series of those conversations where they spoke about spirituality and culture and myth and different ways of looking at the divine in every culture, in every place. And I remember Joseph Campbell saying, there is no image more powerful in the West than Jesus on the cross. That image has been seared into our psyche in the West. We have seen it so many times that it becomes a part of our landscape. And that may actually help us to look at that which causes us fear. To look at that which causes us to be anxious so that we can be healed. What we're looking at in Jesus on the cross is Suffering is going to be part of this life for Jesus and for us. Death is going to be part of this life for Jesus and for us. And yet, that suffering and death does not have the last word. Out of that, through that, even in the midst of that, God brings healing. God brings transformation. God brings new hope new life, a new creation. Jesus then said to Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Friends, however the spirit is blowing in your life, in your landscape, we are invited to trust that God is doing something in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of something in us dying and being transformed. For God so loved you and me and everyone we have ever met and everything that we see and delight in in this world, God so loved this world that he gave us his son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. 
when we look at Jesus on the cross, we are reminded that the worst that humanity can do to the greatest gift God gives us will result in God's response, which is one of forgiveness, one of love, one of new life. In that, we find salvation. Amen. sometimes gently, sometimes with great force. Either way, we trust that you are doing something good, something healing within us and around us. Come Holy Spirit, open us to your invitation to be transformed from fear to love and from hostility to hospitality. Come Holy Spirit, open us to your invitation to be transformed from exclusionary tendencies and purity codes of various kinds to value and support inclusion of all people, all nations, all races, all sexual orientations and gender identities, all status, all abilities. Come, Holy Spirit, as we mark the one-year anniversary of Mr. George Floyd's murder, open us to your invitation to do the hard and important work of deepening multiracial dialogue, nurturing multiracial healing, and encouraging multiracial reconciliation and community building. Come, Holy Spirit, as we remember the sacrifices of so many this Memorial Day weekend, we ask your continued healing touch and blessing on the families and friends who have lost loved ones in wars. Come, Holy Spirit, bless us with a renewed desire to work for peace and to care for the common good of all people and all nations and all of creation. Come, Holy Spirit, transform us, encourage us, embolden us, lead us to be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world. We pray in Christ who taught us to be bold in praying together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Grace, who is a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee at the Chatham United Methodist Church, has given some leadership in helping our church discover a resource for an online church directory. We hope that everyone who is watching and worshiping with us online in our online congregation will participate in this, as well as people who have been members of our church for many years. This will help us to get to know one another even better. Grace now has some words of encouragement, invitation, and direction for those who would like to participate. Hello, my name is Grace Bend, and I'm a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Growing up in my home United Methodist Church, the church directory was probably more important than our actual phone book. It's what we used when we wanted to send condolence cards to members who had lost a loved one, it's what we use to keep track of birthdays and anniversaries, and most importantly, it's what we use to jog our memory of someone's name, searching through the pictures to identify just who it was we'd been chatting with after the service. When my husband Mark, my son Addison, and I joined Chatham United Methodist Church in January of 2020, we immediately felt welcomed. But to be perfectly honest, we had a really hard time remembering the names of everyone we were connecting with. And then of course the pandemic hit, and we weren't engaging with members in the same ways that we had before. That's why when I joined SPRC this year, I was so excited that one of the first items of discussion was the creation of a church directory. After some research and testing, the church now has access to an online church directory platform that I hope each of you will sign up for and use. This directory allows individuals and families to provide as much or as little information as they would like about themselves. You can provide your address, your email address, phone number, birthdays, anniversaries, and even a photo if you would like. Participants will then also be able to view the information provided by others in this online platform. In this time of pandemic, the church has found that distance is less of an obstacle for us to connect with individuals around the world. So we're encouraging everyone who has a connection to Chatham United Methodist Church, whether you are a member or not, to be a part of this online directory so that we can continue to stay connected with one another. If you're interested in signing up for our church community directory, please go to the church's website, chathamumc.com, where you can find the sign up link on the home page. Once your basic information has been added to the directory, you'll receive a follow up email providing instructions for how to log in and update your information as you see fit. I hope that you will join us in this new way of connecting while we remain physically apart. Over the past 14 months, members of the trustees, the staff parish relations committee, and the church council have gathered, and it's been all via Zoom, and talked about and prayed and discerned when it will be time for us to open our building again for worship and community. We have discerned that the time is soon upon us, we are so grateful to be able to invite you all to an in-person, in the sanctuary worship experience, prayer experience, community experience on June 20th, which is Father's Day. We are going to be practicing um, social distancing in the sanctuary. We are asking all people who come into our building to wear a mask so that we can be care-filled and protect those who are vulnerable, those who are unable to be vaccinated either because of their age or because of a health condition. And so we will be practicing um, good science and, and mask etiquette so that we can worship together. 
we are also going to be continuing to produce online worship experiences, maybe abbreviated. You who are in the online congregation, please email me and let me know what is most meaningful to you so that we can continue to offer that. We're going to be living into a hybrid uh, landscape of worship and spiritual formation, online and in person. The worship service on June 20th will be 10 o'clock, and we will not be broadcasting from inside the sanctuary. We'll be worshiping there, praying there, enjoying community there, but we are going to just be present to one another and present to the presence. So uh, we will be continuing to produce online worship and online spiritual formation um, that will be released at five o'clock on Saturdays, as we've been doing for the last 14 months, and you can worship at any time. We are also inviting those who wish and who feel comfortable to gather together in person on June 20th at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. If you have questions or concerns or would like more information, please feel free to email me and uh, we'll, we'll let you know exactly what our plans are with further detail. Thank you for those who are giving online. We are so grateful for your uh, ongoing generosity and stewardship. You can see the QR code uh, and click on that or just uh, shine your, your camera, your smartphone on that image, that QR code, and then you'll see a direct link to our website giving page, or you can visit us at www.chathamumc.org or .com. We own both of those domains and you can give online or send us a check at 460 Main Street in Chatham, New Jersey. On behalf of the congregation, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your participation in online worship and in the ministries that are done in Jesus' name at Chatham UMC. Let us go from our screens to love God and to love our neighbor and to be in the flow of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit goes with us today and will be there. Amen. <laughs>